Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast, where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City just a lovely place to live. I'm your host, Colin Johnson, with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you're interested in buying or selling a home in the area, or if you're looking at investing in a rental property, give us a call at 423-930-8003, and we will look forward to helping you. Now, let's get to today's episode. I am super excited for you guys to get to know Kate Palmer. Um, She's our guest today on the podcast, and so welcome to the podcast, Kate. Thanks so much for having me. Have you ever done a podcast before? I have. I've done a couple. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just run this one? Because you'll probably do a better job than I would. Yeah, you know. (laughs) (laughs) So your business is Flourish Concierge Physical Therapy, right? Yes. And so I guess... We could jump into that, but first things first, what do you love about Johnson City? I love that you really can't drive anywhere around Johnson City without seeing the mountains. And you you see, I don't know, it's just such like a calming presence for me. I've gotten the opportunity to live quite a few different places. And whenever I live somewhere flat, I always, you know, it, it always kind of bothers me. I can't look around and see the mountains. It's just such a nice, calming thing for me, um, just having so much beauty of the outdoors here. Mm-hmm. I think the other thing I love about it is the community. Yeah. Um, I've, I've been blessed to have found, you know, several different groups of, of people and, and being able to enjoy hobbies and passions. And there's a really vibrant community here of, you know, we've got mountain bikers, we've got, you know, people who do community theater, we've got a lot of artists, we've got just like a wide range of of people here in this this town that you wouldn't expect, and it's been wonderful. I've I've really enjoyed living here. I agree 100. percent And the mountains are awesome, and mm-hmm. they just kind of surround us and protect us from mm-hmm. hurricanes and tornadoes and stuff like that. So it, it is it's just cool. So, where'd you grow up? I was born in Asheville, and okay. my family moved around quite a bit. Uh, so we lived in Atlanta, Mississippi, St. Louis, and then came here. And I, I started Science Hill here, moved nice. here when I started eighth grade. And then my family has stayed ever since. I left to go to college, went to UT. Go Vols. Go Vols. I got <laughs> one at UT. Hey, Cam. He's down there. <laughs> work, study hard, buddy. And um, yeah, and then I graduated from there too. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Not go too Vols. far away. Go Vols. No. Um, and then I went to UT Chattanooga to get my doctorate in physical therapy. Awesome. And then I moved to the Raleigh area and lived there for three years practicing physical therapy. I worked for UNC, and that's where I got some of my more specialized training in women's okay. health. Yeah. And then when the pandemic hit, I really kind of missed home. I felt like I missed the community and the kind of smaller town feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was living in Durham, which is a much bigger town, and it just didn't feel so homey to me. And so I moved back, and I've been really happy to be back. It's been a, a great experience. So I moved back um, December 2021. Okay, mm-hmm. not too long ago. Yeah. Four years. That's awesome. Um, so what? how did you get into, like, did you always want to be a physical therapist? How did you get go down that route? I was a born and raised ballet dancer. That was my true, my one true passion. Um, I just love, I love ballet. Even the toe shoes? Absolutely. Oh, it, man, I don't know how you guys do it. Uh, with pain. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm like, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> um, lots of uh, taped toes. Maybe yeah. that's where the PT came from. You're like, I got to straighten out these toes somehow. That's exactly where it came from. I got injured a lot. Ah. And my uncle is a physical therapist and he owns his own practice in Richmond, Virginia. Cool. And I would get injured and I go up and see him and he'd help me. And then I come go back to dancing and then I get injured again. And then I go see him again. <laughs> but it was just... Uh, I like that you're in ballet too. So you can oh, yeah. see him frequently. <laughs> Oh yeah, he taught me so much too. Uh, I just really enjoyed the experience of, Mm -hmm. it sounds strange, but like the injuries were not fun, but the experience of going through PT and and getting to just, I don't know, go to a gym and and try different exercises and like see what things felt better and understanding your own body mechanics Mm -hmm. was really fascinating to me. So then when I went to college, I just, I really enjoyed all the, you know, anatomy classes and, physics and the things that kind of led me up to doing physical therapy. I was yeah. like, this just feels like something I'm really interested in. Give us a little bit of an overview of what physical therapy is. Like, honestly, mm-hmm. I'd heard of physical therapy. I've now gone to a physical therapist for about 35 times and he's helping me out a ton with my back and so as stuff. And so, um, 
But before that, you know, I have friends who are PT guys and just never um, sat down and said exactly where, you know, what is your discipline and kind of what are you what do you know about the body? And so talk about yeah. PT for the people who are like me, who are like, I've heard of PT or physical therapy, don't know much about it. Mm -hmm. So physical therapy is a branch that created itself during World War II. So a lot of soldiers came back from the war with amputations and with musculoskeletal injuries, and they did not have someone to help. Uh, there was not a profession to help them get stronger mm. or build the kind of muscular strength that they needed to go about their daily lives. So PT was created right around that time specifically to help veterans and other people who were going through injuries. It's, it was kind of considered a branch of nursing at mm -hmm. that time, and now it's considered its own separate thing. Yeah. Um, but if that's where it started from was really, how do we help people be able to walk better? Mm. Because that was the b biggest issue back then. Right. And so now it's evolved into how do we help people move better? So you have, you know, your branch of medicine where there's orthopedists who can assess, do you need to have a surgery to correct something that's broken or a tendon that's torn? But then what do you do after you have surgery? Because you might be in a sling or you might, you know, have a knee replacement and you can't move your knee. How do you get from there to back mountain biking or back hiking or running or just chasing after your kids, how do you get from point A to point B? And that's where physical therapy comes in, is we help improve basically just how you move. That's that's what we do. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, so I never knew kind of the origin of it. And so that's, that's really neat. Thank you for sharing that. And then so talk about schooling, because it's a whole nother deal, right? I mean, uh -huh. it's like going to med school. And so talk about, you went to UTC, which is just mm -hmm. down the road, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I did my undergrad at uh, UT Knoxville. So to do physical therapy, you have to have an undergrad, bachelor's degree. Mine was in Spanish. Um, I was going, you gotta have like biology or chemistry or- Yeah, I was, I was more non-traditional. Uh, I like was, it. <laughs> but I really just wanted to study abroad and the major was flexible enough. I could take all the pre-med classes and it just worked out. But, um, and also I thought I might, you know, need Spanish to speak is, Spanish yeah, with clients. Yeah, that's super helpful. Yeah, so, that's awesome. That's yeah. Forward thinking. Thank you very much. Uh, please remind my father that uh, <laughs> whenever I was telling him, yeah, I want to be a Spanish major. Good job, Mr. Palmer, <laughs> supporting her even through the Spanish major. <laughs> and now you're bilingual and you can help oh, yeah. all kinds of Spanish people. So we'll let you just go off in Spanish now for a little while and just, no, I'm kidding. Go Great, ahead. I'm prepared. We'll do that at the end. <laughs> uh, then after a bachelor's degree, you have to have a three-year doctorate degree. Okay. So that's when I went to UT Chattanooga. Gotcha. And it's a pretty intensive three years. ETSU has a great program here as well. Uh, same thing, three years. And it's a mix of intense classwork and then internships where you're working in the field. Mm -hmm. You're trying to apply your skills that you've learned from the classroom on real people and learning the you know soft skills, social skills of communicating with people and all different types of people. I mean, that's a huge part of it as well. For sure. And then the boards you have to take mm -hmm. and pass all that. And then I guess clinical hours you have to, before you're fully certified to go out on your own? Or? Yeah, the board exam is the kind of the last step. So most programs, you have to finish your clinical hours before you can take the boards. And then you have to do all the steps to take the boards. I think it's like, it was like a five hour test, you know, really fun. And then you get your results back. And probably one of your best days ever. Huh? Yeah, I or remember. Or the day you got the results back were probably the best day. <laughs> that was definitely much better. I left the boards, uh, I called my mom crying. I was like, there's no way I didn't pass, I failed. And then, you know, I passed, it was fine. Right. But <laughs> it's just the way you feel. I think I we're think. hard on ourselves. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that comes from, but we are for sure, <laughs> for sure. Okay, and then so you've worked in numerous places. Mm -hmm. You said you kind of, I guess, got a little more specific in, was it Durham or Chapel Hill area? Yeah, I worked for UNC and they had a couple, they had branches all over the Raleigh Triangle. Mm -hmm. So I worked in a Durham clinic and then uh, over at a clinic in Raleigh, just kind of, they shifted me over a little bit. Okay. Um, and that was a wonderful experience. UNC is an incredible hospital system and they're really at the forefront of a lot of things medically. And so it was great to get to learn from that team there and then to be able to bring that knowledge here uh, because we need we need just as much. Um, everyone needs great medical care. Yeah. But the things that I learned there and like the women's health specialty, uh, it really made me realize how much of a need there is everywhere. 
uh, because so many women who go through childbirth or go through menopause have changes physically and there's not great resources out there to help them. Just like we talk about, you know, PT helps you move better. Mm -hmm. There's there's other things that happen, you know, when you're pregnant or postpartum yeah. where you're not moving better and you need a specialist who can help you get back to where you want to be. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that a little bit because, I mean, Mitch and I haven't given birth <laughs> And so we, <laughs> we don't know, uh, you know, what all goes on in the body. So let's say, I mean, my wife has done that for sure. And so, um, yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about what happens to your body when you, and where you would come in afterwards. And, and mm -hmm. for people who are listening who like, oh, I, you know what? That makes a ton of sense. And that could be why I feel the way I feel. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting how when the, when our like belly starts to grow, yeah. your center of gravity changes. For sure. Which makes sense. Yeah. So it becomes more forward and therefore the, there's a lot of structural changes in your back and your rib cage mm -hmm. to help expand and create more space mm -hmm. <laughs> for something that's growing. And when we give birth, those things don't automatically go back to the way they were. We still can have what we, ha what we consider like a rib flare or just more uh, tightness in the upper back mm -hmm. to create this like open space yeah. for a baby. And that can cause a lot of pain. It can cause shoulder pain with breastfeeding. It can cause just, you know, pain carrying uh, a newborn child, mm -hmm. um, which can just be hard as they grow. I mean, they're, you know, little, little potatoes there and they just keep getting bigger. They do. <laughs> and then they wind up really big. Christian just passed me the other day, Mitch. He's taller than me. <laughs> I know. So yeah, yeah. They keep getting bigger. They, they, so you have, you know, your, your structural changes have happened, your pelvis is widened, and then those things don't automatically come back together. Right. And a lot of people, they recover well on their own, but it's becoming more commonplace for women to just automatically go to a women's health PT or a pelvic PT to get some things assessed or, or um, assisted with just to help them recover faster. Yeah. When I was telling my mom about when I started my practice, she was like, this wasn't a thing when I, you know, when I had mm -hmm. you, like this wasn't a thing. I don't even know why women would want to do this. And then over time, as I've talked to her about it, she's like, wait, I really wish I had had this opportunity. Cause she, you know, everyone has changes that happen with like yeah. your pelvis and your, your muscles, sure. even your abdominal muscles get weaker mm -hmm. and you need, I mean, you can recover on your own, but you can recover faster and better if right, you have more properly. someone right, yeah, to someone, help you, yeah, kind of guide you, know, like you through a, that. A coach kind of thing. To help exactly. You do that. Mm -hmm. And I think those effects can be long lasting, right? I mean, absolutely. How long, like after, let's say you have a baby and they're, you know, now they're 10 or whatever, mm -hmm. is it still, is, how late's too late to come see you? There's never too late. It's, yeah. There's never a cutoff point where you, you would not find benefit. Yeah. from working on the things that are bothering you. There's some new studies that are coming out saying that the postpartum period is up to seven years after oh, wow. you've had your last child. That's how long it takes for your, your body really to recover, which is kind of shocking. I don't think we consider that That's as a much. long time. That's a long time. Yeah. We go to church with a lot of ladies who are having a lot of babies, so it might be a good connection for you for sure. Um, yeah, and so where do you feel like the Lord led you into getting into the women's, I mean, just that mm -hmm. women's focus. How do you feel like that happened? For me, it happened because I had a an orthopedic client when I worked at UNC who had described a lot of pain and discomfort like around her pelvis after giving birth. And she also was having like some issues with her bladder. Mm -hmm. And so she was going to the urologist all the time. She was constantly like, having to go to the doctor for different things that she she didn't understand why they were happening. Right. And so then after like looking into it more and talking to my colleagues there, we were able to do some things to help her alleviate her pain and then also eliminate her bladder issues. And once I figured out like, wait, we can improve your bladder function so you're not up all night, like that's wild to me. And that that for me really lit a spark of like, oh, there's so much, there's so much good that can be had if people are aware and able to access this, these services. Yeah. Because it's, it's surprising how much people suffer from 
like frustrations with their bladder of having yeah. to go all the time. Let's talk about that while we're on it, because uh, <laughs> that's probably a hot topic for some people that might be listening. Like, hey, how can we improve our bladder function or yeah. lack thereof? So there's a lot of things that contribute to bladder frequency mm -hmm. or issues with your bladder. One of them is unfortunately what we eat and drink. So there's certain things that trigger more frequency with our bladder. But the other, the main thing that, you know, when I'm working with someone and I'm treating them, we're looking at what are the muscles and structures that are attached to the bladder mm -hmm. that are compressing it and making it more difficult for it to do its job. Gotcha. So working on improving muscle tension and strength around the bladder improves bladder symptoms significantly. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So is that a lot of pelvic core, as we call it? Like, you mm -hmm. know, So what are some typical exercises you have people do? Or you probably won't want to prescribe that. Oh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to. Is there some to. general <laughs> stuff that just the average guy could do or girl? And can, does it work for guys? It you? does work for guys. Okay. Yeah, it does work so for guys. Here we go. I will say it's pretty frustrating because all I'm going to say is breathe. And if there's any PTs out there, you know what I'm talking about. So the, the, the reason that we focus so much on breathing is there's a strong connection with our diaphragm. That's our mm -hmm. muscle under the rib cage and our pelvic floor. And so when those two are working in harmony, they are able to help relax and move each other. So usually, I'd say 90% of the time, the first thing that I work on with most people it's is improving breathing. their breathing technique. I love it. Mm -hmm. I like breathing. Me too. I'm and a fan. Are you a Wim Hof fan? Do you like, have you studied Wim Hof at all? This guy, he's the ice man and he supposedly can sit in a bathtub full of ice cubes and like for an hour, you know, just because he can breathe and keeps his temperature like regulated. It's just crazy. But anyway, there are different breathing techniques are fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So um, do you want to take us through a breathing technique? Or sure. Or tell somebody, is it like box breathing kind of thing? Or um, I, I prefer like a slower exhale, but box breathing is another great technique. Okay. That's yep. where you, you imagine that your breath is like following the line of a box. Mm -hmm. So when I'm working with someone, usually we'll focus on what I call 360 degree breathing. Oh, I like it. Meaning that we're expanding the rib cage in all directions, not just front and back. So I like to put my hands on the side of my rib cage okay, where you can that. feel the kind of bones mm -hmm. and then give yourself a little bit of a squeeze. Mm -hmm. And then when you breathe in, see if you can try to expand your breath under your hands. I How did it. Go? Yeah, I saw it, it looked yeah. good. Yeah, I think um, we don't think about breathing. We don't. We just kind of do the, we get through the day and we're like, wow. I made it, and, you, and but you, when you catch yourself, it's really shallow, like mm -hmm. in your, so, I mean, during the day, I'll try and work on, and luckily, sometimes your watch will tell you, too, now to take a moment <laughs> and, and breathe, but I really try and push down mm -hmm. in the diaphragm, but that's a good one, too, to think about expanding your rib cage as well as going mm -hmm. kind of down into the belly area as well. Yeah, it's more effective. Yeah. And it, I think that having the physical pressure on the rib cage gives you something to push into, yeah. which makes it easier. That's a good thought. Thanks for sharing that. You're very welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so what other things, um, specialties, or what can you do? Tell us about Flourish PT. Yeah. Like your practice. So you left Raleigh, you came here, and mm -hmm. you're like, I'm going to start my own practice. Yeah, I worked at the Sofa Women's Health Clinic, okay. um, but then they unfortunately closed in February. So that's when I started Flourish. Gotcha. And my my dream behind Flourish is that I wanted to create a women's health practice where women can come for orthopedic issues, pelvic floor issues, anything, everything in between, and really have the best, highest quality care that they can. Gotcha. Um, I offer home visits as well as in the office. That's cool. So a lot of my new moms really like not having to bring their baby out to the office. Yes, especially, especially now in that, the winter when it's getting colder. Yeah, Yeah. not worry about, do I have the everything packed in the car seat? You know, I'm running mm -hmm. late. Um, I come to them, I bring everything with me. And so I think it's just one less thing to worry about yeah. for them. Yeah. But that's my that's my goal is just to provide a really high quality level of care. And part of that as we kind of move through the the traditional physical therapy course is then also providing wellness services. So uh, back in 
Durham, I used to participate in a, a weekly running group. And so I got pretty good at analyzing gait, oh, analyzing that's gait cool. patterns. Yeah. So I, I do like a return to running program. I have like a gait analysis program where I'll videotape you running and then we can help kind of correct some things that's to cool. improve your gait. Uh, I also teach some pregnancy classes. I teach a push prep class for women who are expecting, mm -hmm. who want to have a more, uh, hopefully a more safe and effective labor. Um, yeah, and then of course I'm a dancer, so I teach dance classes and I love to work with dancers as well. Um, just helping improve like foot and ankle mobility and biomechanics, things like that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. um, what's your favorite thing about your job? I think it's connecting with people, getting yeah. to meet people and getting just to, I don't know, get little peeks into all different types of, of, of people. I don't know. Cause everyone, everyone is so different. I mean, I'm the youngest client I've worked with is 18. The oldest I've worked with is 96. Oh wow! And so it's just, it's, it's just a really unique position to be able to get to meet and, and work with people. And hear people's stories. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about the podcast. I get to hear people's stories and connect with them like you. So yeah, and I think you do a great job with that. If you're listening, go on YouTube, watch it, because Kate's just great. You'll enjoy <laughs> meeting her. Um, where is your practice? It's on West 10th Avenue, so it's a, a couple streets up from the library. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's I a cute to, little old house. Carly and I used to live on 9th Avenue. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, so tell us a little bit about, um, let's go back to Johnson City, because mm -hmm. it is Johnson City Living. Um, so you live here. It looks like you're engaged. Mm -hmm. um, what do you and your fiance like to do for fun in Johnson City? We love to eat. Yeah. So <laughs> it's been great to get to try so many of the new places coming yeah. coming up. And um, last night we had a dinner at Southern Craft. Oh, love Southern Craft. Their fried okra is just spot on. It's I so love good. the burnt ends. The burnt ends are so good. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's super healthy too. <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. Feeling great this morning. Um, we, we love like going out and about and like doing things like we, we really enjoy going to walk on the Tweetsie trail. Yeah. When they built that, uh, I was just truly so thrilled to have like a really big, nice walking path like that. Yeah. It is super cool. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. And now I think they're taking it all the way to Rome mountain or something. Oh really? Yeah. I didn't know like that. It goes all the way through Elizabeth. Oh, that's exciting. It is pretty crazy. That's pretty neat. So, I just, I personally love being outdoors and getting to, you know, from my house to the Tweezy Trails five minutes. I can get to Founders Park. I can go to Willow Springs, which is one of my favorite parks. Mm -hmm. Just being able to access so much like really nice outdoor space. Mm -hmm. I don't think we realize how important that is and how, what a, what a boost to our quality of life yeah. to just be able to, to go out into nature and yeah. not have to drive so far to no. get to it. Right. I mean, you can really literally walk out your front door and just mm -hmm. start walking and you're going to see some beautiful stuff, which mm -hmm. is just super cool. Um, date night for you and your fiance. What's his name? You want to give him Michael. a shout? Michael. Michael. <laughs> hey, Michael. Uh, where do you guys go for dinner? Like besides Southern Craft? What's um, your favorite spot? We love Wan Xiao mm -hmm. and Juniper. Yep. Good ones. Mm -hmm. And our, I mean, we're, we like the, the traditional dinner and a movie oh yeah <laughs> uh i really i personally really love going to the movies i think it might be the popcorn but i just love it <laughs> we do have a great movie theater we do too. like a lot of places you don't have one of, and we now have the reclining chairs that yes eat and recline which is so nice mm -hmm. so we enjoy doing that um the other night we went out to tennessee hills the distillery yeah they have a new fall menu which oh. is incredible uh, my, I had some family come into town a couple weeks ago and they're, they are, um, whiskey snobs, I would say, and they were blown away. Oh, I was so, cool. I was so proud. I was like, please come try. I know you're going to like yeah, it. Is it SC Callahan's or something? Mm -hmm. They have, uh, their, yeah, their whiskey's pretty good. Yeah. I need to get him on the, on the podcast. So if you're listening, Mr. Tennessee Hills, I'd love to have you on <laughs> um, and bring some whiskey with you. <laughs> so, um, what do you guys, are you, do you play any sports or anything in the area too? I know we have a lot of people that are interested in like pickleball and golf mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Do you guys do any of that or just mainly walk and hike? Uh, I'm more of a hiker. I, I mean, I, I teach ballet. I teach an adult ballet class as well. Um, at, when do you have time for your... Oh, your you know, when, I, when I'm supposed to be sleeping. There you go. All that time. Work him in there somewhere. <laughs> 
Um, Johnson City Arts Center, which used to be Trinity Arts Center. Yeah. They, I teach an adult ballet class really? there. That's mm -hmm. cool. They have a couple adult classes, which is neat, and they have a great kids program. So tell us a little bit about teaching ballet to adults. Is that, I mean, uh, I guess some people are like, I never fulfilled that dream of being a ballerina. I'm going to come see you and do that. Or no, is that, I'm totally off. No, it's a, <laughs> truly it's a, it's a wide range. Okay. Of, a wide range. I have a couple people who have started in the past year. So this is a new activity for them. Uh -huh. And then there's some people who have been doing gymnastics or cheerleading. So uh -huh. they have that kind of background. And this is not that far away from that. So they just enjoy doing it. And then I have some people who are just like hoping to get a good workout right. from it. And I will tell you, it is a workout. Is that kind of like the bar workout, the BA? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. it's very similar. Um, well, the nice thing about teaching adult ballet is that there's really not a lot of pressure because none of us are doing it to be professionals. We're just doing it because we enjoy it. Yeah, so it's just fun. It's just fun. And that's, that's my goal when, when I'm teaching the class. I have to remind myself that sometimes. But um, because I, I also, when I grew up taking ballet, I was used to having very strict teachers, as you would expect ballet teachers. And uh, so sometimes I have to remind myself, oh, yeah, this is just for fun. But it's, I mean, it's, it's a really neat experience to be able to do that and participate with people who just want to, who are just lifelong learners, who want to just continue to learn or not afraid to humble themselves and try something new. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's a wonderful community. And I read somewhere or heard too, a lot of football players uh -huh. take ballet because it's good for stretching and keeps them on balance and just... Yeah, so you have any football guys playing, coming to ballet? Yeah. I don't, but I have a couple martial arts uh, guys. Nice. Who do like MMA. Well, if you're playing football or <laughs> MMA and you want to come get your uh, ballet skills. And work on your core strength. And work yeah. on your core strength. Yeah, yeah, come on. <laughs> How often do you teach? Every uh, Tuesday night. Every Tuesday night, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Now, would you guys put on a production at any point? I'm not sure. Uh, the Johnson City Arts Center does a production at the end of every semester. So in December, they will have a show called God With Us. And then in the spring, they'll do one that usually is like a unique, just kind of put it together themselves. So you may sneak some of your students in there. I might. Uh, I've had a couple who've requested to, cool. to be in there. So you so might. So they could fulfill their dream. They could. You might see us pop up in the back corner. Um, That'd we'll be see. Cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. Now, that's a ballet production, but you also like to do acting, I guess? I do, yeah. I, I'm pretty involved with the Jonesboro Repertory Theater. I squeeze this in between. <laughs> I don't know when you're not sleeping. This is a 2 a.m. activity. It is, yeah, 2 to 4. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, now that we list all these things, it does sound quite, like quite a lot. You've got a lot going on, Kate. I do. I enjoy being busy. Yeah. So talk <laughs> about the Johnson City, or Jonesboro. Jonesboro Repertory, Repertory Theater. Repertory Theater. Yeah, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that. and. I, I'm glad I have you here because I can probably ask you about the Jackson Theater here in a minute too. Oh, you can uh, tell me all about that. Yeah, I love JRT Jonesville Repertory Theater. It is it is a family. It really is of of people who like the adult ballet class. They just love the arts mm -hmm. and they just want to put on the best production that we can. Right. And I think the see I've I worked with them back when I was in. Uh, college and then coming back here years later it's wonderful to see how they've grown and progressed and I just I mean I'm biased but I think the quality is truly incredible for a community theater I, every time we go Carly and I just walk out there and we're like that was awesome <laughs> I mean like it was just great and then sometimes we've got friends who are in it or their kids are in it and so it's a lot of fun and I love it I it is it fun. we're we're so blessed to have an opportunity for people to be involved with theater mm -hmm. and then also for people to be able to see shows without having to drive far away. Right. Because the, the you know, the next nearest theater would be Abingdon maybe and then Knoxville. Mm -hmm. So that's, that can be quite a drive. It's yeah. nice to have something here. And then also to support local people because we're all volunteers. Everyone who works at that theater is a volunteer. So it's just, you do it for the love of it. Right. Which I think, is probably why they express themselves in the way they do and the show comes out so wonderfully because they love mm -hmm. doing it. They're in their sweet spot. Tell me what's going on with the Jackson Theater. Like, it's a brand new looking thing mm -hmm. right on Main Street and I thought they were building it for the Repertory Theater, maybe not, I don't know. So 
maybe you can enlighten me and our listeners on what's going on there if you know it what's sure going on. um i don't know the official things i know so, what i've uh I, I know a little bit so it's so only... this is complete hearsay <laughs> which is i'm fine. afraid so I'm afraid <laughs> that's all right so. that's all right um it I don't is think owned... to hold us accountable to it so <laughs> It is owned by Jonesboro, the town. Yep. So I believe that JRT will be able to put on shows there, but nice. that the town of Jonesboro also wants to bring in like musical acts yeah. and other um, things besides the, the plays and musicals that JRT does. Um, I'm not sure on the timeline for when they're planning to be done, but the sign out front looks beautiful and I'm very anxious to see yeah, it. I it's, can't wait. It, yeah, it looks awesome from the outside and then mm -hmm. you kind of like peek around the back and the, behind the curtain a little bit. And yeah. It's still a big box in there and open and I don't know how many seats it'll have, but it'll... I think it's over 300. Yeah, it'll be nice. Yeah, the JRT's theater is around 120. Okay. So it'll, you know, we're doubling, doubling the capacity, which hey, is very exciting. And we can get ticket sales up and you guys can make a little money. Yeah. Instead of just being volunteers. <laughs> well, um, right now, I mean, when we sell out shows, what we do is just kind of add more, which is fun to get to do the show more, but right. then it's also for, for everyone involved. It's Another. also like, lot of time yeah it, it can be it can be challenging so there's a lot of um, exciting potential to see what happens when the Jackson opens and yeah. I'm, I'm really excited for that I am too I am too talk about Jonesboro you what do you love most about Jonesboro oh Jonesboro Jonesboro is like a Hallmark movie it really is yeah like you just drive <laughs> down the main street and you're just like this is I'm right out of a Hallmark movie. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting somebody to come out singing or... It's usually us. We yeah. are usually singing. That's right. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> or some couple just walking around, you know, like the... I love... Carly, I love Hallmark movies. Don't mm -hmm. tell Carly, but she watches them a lot. And I kind of put off the, you know, the vibe that it's not really what I'm into. But I do love them. I I'm love so. them too. But I think they should shoot one here. I think so too. I thought... I really think Jonesboro would be the perfect setting. I mean... Really, Hallmark, I know you're listening. They obviously. are, obviously. <laughs> Please come here and film. We have plenty of actors. Yeah. You, like, <laughs> all you'd have to do, you. and Mitch actually could run audio and his wife could do the video. So all I have to do is basically just put it on the TV. There we go. We got it all for you. Yeah. Come on down. Yeah. And just like, you know, give the JRT a million bucks or something. Yeah. We, we would take that. I, I think. would think you would. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> well, we figured that out. What else do we need to solve today? <laughs> Um, what is your go-to place for a hamburger in town? Gourmet and Company. Oh, yes. good call. Mm -hmm. With the Benton's bacon? Yes. The, they do some kind of jam. Is it bacon jam? Mm. Or no, sorry. It's the, the garlic aioli. Oh. Oh my yeah. gosh. Can't have it without. Yeah. It's so good. Truffle fries. Yes. And if you dip them in blue cheese dressing, this is just so good. Carly and I love gourmet. Okay. Where's your favorite pizza joint? Breaks my heart. Scratch was my favorite. Yep. Um, so we are still on the hunt for our new favorite. So if you have suggestions. What does your husband do? He or seemed to be husband. Yeah, he works in supply chain management for a furniture company. Oh, well, he could open Scratch back up. <laughs> I mean, like, and run the thing, you know, mm -hmm. furniture deal on the side. And, yeah. Or just do the, yeah. He could figure it out. Okay, it, I'll let him it's know. It's sitting there. <laughs> or if you're like, hey, I don't have anything to do and I love pizza. Please just go to the scratch place and like knock on the door and say, I will open this up for you because there is a, I think there's a large contingency of people in town. Mm -hmm. We could even probably start like a campaign, bring back scratch. Yeah, back scratch. probably. And, um, and so we can get it going. So <laughs> yes. I'll let them know. So scratch is not open. So what, tell me again, your favorite pizza joint. We're still trying to find one. Okay. Okay. Cootie Brown's pizza. You like those? I've had Cootie Brown's oh, pizza. Oh, that could be a game changer okay. for you. Um, I'll put it on the list. And then desserts. Like, we don't talk much about desserts mm. on our podcast. But oh, I can should. tell you. I can tell you my dessert okay. preferences. So, Let's go. Um, I am a pastry person. Me too. I love a uh, croissant or chocolate oh, croissant is my yes. favorite. So, love crumb. I love Lazy Lady Bakery. You're, yep. Yep. You're I just will, knocking it out of the park. I will be uh, out the door waiting 
uh, for them to open in the morning yeah. <laughs> to grab myself a little pastry sometimes. There you go. Um, also, the Corner Cup in Jonesboro is a cute little breakfast place too. They have yes. great croissants. They got a great. Co they make great coffee there. Mm -hmm. I love. That's another. Yeah. Good mm -hmm. thing. That's where the Hallmark people will come out of Corner yes. Cup, walking down, holding their little cup of cocoa. Yes. And yeah. then there'll be some sort of dramatic event that they're going to have to solve. Mm -hmm. You know, someone stole the. Jonesboro Christmas tree or yeah. the lights don't work or something. Right, or the town hall bell is broken and they've got to fix it. We'll figure it out. It'll, <laughs> it's going to come together. <laughs> it's going to come together. Okay, what fires you up? Like what's like, hey, this, like if I get to do this or what this, what's just your most passionate thing? And I've got some guesses, but. <laughs> There's quite a bit. Um, I know, like you do a ton of stuff. I'm, I'm very passionate about quite a few things. Anytime that I get to talk about pelvic PT, I get excited because I just want people to know because yeah. I think it's just an underutilized service. I agree as well. And so talk up, let's jump back into Flourish a little bit just before we hit, wrap it up mm -hmm. um, because I want to promote Flourish and your business because I think that is a, a, a need in the area for sure. Um, Talk about symptoms, like if some of our listeners now are like, I feel like this, and mm -hmm. maybe that's why, you know, some of the things you can help alleviate. Yeah. Would that be a good topic or question? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So even if you have not been pregnant or had a baby, you can still have pelvic floor dysfunction. There is a really strong correlation between having chronic low back pain and pelvic floor dysfunction. It's as high as 95% according to a 2018 study wild. So if you've had chronic low back pain and it's not been getting better and you're wondering if maybe you want to have like something, your pelvic uh, floor muscles addressed, try pelvic PT. Okay. Other things could be if you feel like you can't control your bladder well, or you feel like you're going too frequently and it's really irritating you or your friends or family, then yeah, there's, there's tons of things we can do to help improve that. Other things could be if you have, um, if you have like pelvic pain, that could be pain that comes from like around your time of the month, or it could be all the time, or it could be when you walk or move, you feel more pain like through your very, very low back where that's where the pelvis attaches. Those are all signs and symptoms that you would benefit from pelvic PT. And if you're not sure, I'd be happy to, you know, talk to anybody who's like, I'm not sure if that's what this is. Yeah. Feel free to give me a call because I'd be happy to talk to you and be like, okay, maybe this is where you should go. Or maybe we should try this avenue. Just if you're wondering, I'd be happy to. Gotcha. So how do our listeners connect with you to get like a, a pre, you know, a consult? Mm-hmm. Yep, so I have a, a website, flourishconciergept.com. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram, Flourish Concierge PT. You can call me directly. It's My phone number is 423-845-5845. It's on my website as well. Nice. And there's a little like link in my website where if you wanna just send me a message and then have me call say, you. I can they text you at that number as well? They can, but I, um, I would prefer a call <laughs> if possible because sometimes the texts add up and I, uh, it's easier for me to just talk on the phone. I'm with you. I love talking on the phone. Yeah, it's and, just easier uh, for me. If you get it done faster, I mm -hmm. think, than texting back and forth. And they're like emails now. You got. I look back, to, uh, like after this, I'll have 50 texts I've got to respond yeah. to. And you're like, good grief. So, okay. And then um, how busy are you? Like if somebody said, you know, I really would love to see Kate, you know, and get this addressed. Mm -hmm. How quickly can you get in to see them? Typically within the week. Oh, wow. I mean, if it's Friday... Probably not right. that day, right. but usually if it's in the early part of the week, I can I can get you seen by the end of the week. If you're living within the Tri-Cities, like within Tennessee, I can also come to you. Gotcha. If you're across the border in North Carolina, I can come to you. If you're in Virginia, you got to come to me. Gotcha. Just licensing. I have my North Carolina and yeah. Tennessee license. So. Talk about how much it costs, payments, insurance, stuff like that maybe? A yeah. Bit. Yeah. I don't know. So part of the... <laughs> trying to help you out. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate it. So part of the reason I started Flourish, like I mentioned, is that I wanted to provide the highest quality care that I could and not have to have really short visits that sometimes happen or have to see multiple clients at once yeah. because I want to really give each person the right 
quality care that they sure. deserve. Yeah. So with that, I'm out of network, which means that I give everyone an invoice with all of our little charges. They submit it to their insurance for reimbursement. Gotcha. And that way there's no uh, back hidden costs. There's no me coming after you with a bill a year later, which unfortunately happens a lot. In, it's the in worst. The You're like, system. I think I paid for that. And then, no, you still owe $10,000 or whatever. Crazy. Yeah, it's... It's that's because you had two aspirin when you were in our office. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not how I want to be. I no, just want to be. Nobody wants to be like that. No, I just want to be direct and upfront. You know what you're paying, and we're comfortable with that. And that way, you get the best quality care that you want, and you're you're kind of in control. It gives the clients more control, I think, than having to go somewhere where they're not sure if they can see the same provider every time. They're not sure. If they're going to be the only client, probably not. Right. So that's that's why I set up my business the way I did and why I offer mobile visits. Nice. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Um, anything that I forgot to ask you that you'd like to share? Hmm. Or anything? my favorite um, my favorite coffee shops. Oh yeah. <laughs> I do love coffee. Top um, two. Oh, two. Okay. Well. Okay, now I've got to. I've stressed her this out. This is hard. Okay. She, should look, she started perspiring, like having to make like this decision. I could put the weight of the world on yes. you. Yes. Okay, it's going to be all right. It's a difficult Top decision. Two. Philosopher's Tea House. I've never been there. You must go, even if you don't like tea. I like tea. My mother's English. I love. Tea. Oh, great. There you go. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. They have so many different certain levels of service you can try like the chinese method you can do the traditional english method and you can just get a basic cup of tea that's cool they have some really incredible stuff uh and then dos gatos is my other favorite gotcha mm -hmm. good ones for sure good ones for sure that okay was that was a hard choice um any questions for me what's your what's your favorite pizza place give me Ooh, a suggestion my favorite pizza place um Oddly, we get a lot of pizza from Mad Greek, which is a okay. It's because um, you can get a little personal pizza. So Friday night at our house is pizza and movie night, and so I can get my own little barbecue chicken pizza with jalapenos and um, pineapple, and it mm. is fantastic. And so, and then Christian will get a pepperoni pizza, and Carly gets she usually gets some Greek stuff, so she loves Greek food and Mediterranean food. And so, yeah, I would say that one. Um, the Caribbean pizza at Cootie Brown's is fantastic. Hmm. It's chicken and like um, artichoke hearts with this jerk sauce on top of it. And it's got some other stuff, but it's just thin crust, light, delicious. Oh, it's so good. Oh, great. Okay. I'll put those on my list yeah. to try. Yeah. Um, oddly, Project Barbecue. We have got a group of guys that we get together with and one of the gentlemen brought Project Barbecue Pizza. I don't know if you've had Project Barbecue. Mm -hmm. So they make a pizza and they've got a wood fire in there and I think it's it was smoky and delicious. Oh, it's so good. Mm. It was good. So that's that that's the secret pizza of the conversation okay. for people who got to listen. <laughs> um okay. Anything else we can No. All right. Well, good. thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank Catherine for referring you and if oh, you yeah. wanna, <laughs> if you want to think of someone else to refer to the podcast, that's how we just get to know people and then our listeners get to know you and hopefully you'll ha will help you flourish. Thank you. I appreciate it. Place. So thank you guys for listening. Again, I'm Colin Johnson with the Colin and Carly group and Keller Williams Realty. If you're interested in buying a home, selling a home, we manage property and help people invest. Um, we'd love to connect with you. Interest rates are high, but that's okay because you still got to find a place to live. And we love helping people find a place to live and build wealth through real estate. So Thank you for listening. Enjoy the fall and have a great day.